So then the mom in anger calls the GP and she's like, oh, what did you prescribe? What is this? So the family had to cancel three hours before the scheduled meeting. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, but like we had no idea what she was talking about. Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a first year medical student and welcome to Ovi Med. All right, so let me just set a bit of context here. So as part of our first year medical curriculum, we have this course called Family Case Study. And as part of this course, students as a pair are assigned to a family by a tutor, which is a GP, and the patients are from his practice. And the Family Case Study involves making three visits at the homes of the families with a newborn. Then in parallel, we have tutorials with our GPs and other members of our team, of our class, where we're gonna be discussing uh, what we've seen with our families, uh, special cases or conditions, and just overall discussions about how it went. Due to the current sanitary situation, however, physical face-to-face -face visits can't really take place. And so they have been replaced with virtual visits, hence my beautiful thumbnail. And these virtual visits can either be through phone call or Zoom, which is what we did. So before going any further, here's a quick disclaimer for you guys. Obviously, I must respect the patient's confidentiality. So I don't expect me to tell you anything about who they are, their personal data, conditions, or what happened exactly during the visit. What I can tell you though, is my experience, how it is to see a patient through Zoom virtually, what we had to do, and what it meant for me to see a patient. So prior to our first visit, we had a tutorial with our GP, and the role of that tutorial was to learn about confidentiality. So for example, one of the scenarios that we've seen is, okay, so there's a mom and a 16 year old daughter. So the daughter got prescribed contraceptive pills, and then a few days later, the mom finds these pills in the daughter's room, but she wasn't aware that she got prescribed the contraceptive pills. So then the mom in anger calls the GP and she's like, oh, what did you prescribe? What is this? Why does she need this? Blah, blah, blah. And then the question is, what would you do as a GP? So this is quite a delicate situation. However, you must respect patient's confidentiality. And in this case, your patient is the daughter, not the mom. So in this scenario, you can't really talk about why or what you prescribe exactly. Obviously she found the pills and they're contraceptive pills, so she knows what it is. But beyond that, you can encourage, you know, the mom to talk with the daughter and stuff like that. But you can't really disclose, you know, any confidential information without the daughter's consent. And then we had a few other scenarios, you know, discussing confidentiality and what kind of situations you're allowed to break patient confidentiality uh, and stuff like that. But now let's move on to the visit itself. All right, so the visit was divided into four main parts. So in the first part, we had to collect information on the baby, the pregnancy and the delivery. So examples of information that we need to collect is like the birth date, uh, the weight of the baby, the duration of the pregnancy, the complications during the delivery, if any, or during the pregnancy and other informations like that. Then in part two, we needed to ask some questions about the feeding and sleeping habits of the baby. And if there were any concerns relating to, you know, breastfeeding, um, bottle feeding and stuff like that. In the third part, there were some general questions regarding sugar intake and if there were any nutritional concerns. So once again, we're touching on the aspect of nutrition uh, with breastfeeding in section two, and then if there were any concerns or problems regarding um, eating in general. And in the last part, we checked the developmental milestones of the baby at six weeks. Like was the baby smiling? Uh, was the baby following movements with their eyes and stuff like that. So that was it for the first visit. Uh, it went kind of quickly, uh, as you've seen by my video last week, I then in around 30 minutes or so. Uh, and then for the next visit, what we're gonna have to do is check for some more developmental milestones, such as uh, if the baby can crawl alone or even stand up, if the baby can lift its head, uh, that comes before, you know, walking and crawling, obviously. And then we're gonna move to the immunization stage, like if the baby's got any vaccines and at what point they're gonna get them. Uh, or if they will get them and some more stuff. But I'm gonna talk to you more about that uh, after my second visit maybe or in another video. So let's move on to the next point, which is about the virtual aspect of the visit. So as you would have seen by my video last week, which I'm gonna link to right here, organizing a meeting with the family wasn't as straightforward as I thought. So the family we were assigned canceled the day before our tutorial. So there we were, my colleague and I, the day before meeting the GP in charge to tell him about our visit, without actually having seen the family. So something came up in the family schedule. So the family had to cancel three hours before 
the scheduled meeting. So in a rush, we wrote to the GP in charge and we're assigned a new family. And then with luck, we did the meeting literally one hour before the tutorial with our GP. And we ended up like 30 minutes early uh, to spare, uh, which is nice. And I'm saying it's nice because in that half an hour remaining, we needed to write down all the answers to the questions that we asked, all the discussions that we had with the family, you know, write down a like, report of what happened during the visit, um, you know, take all the boxes that we needed to take in the logbook that we have, and then just do some research on stuff that we had never seen before, like the APGAR score, I've never seen that before, or what is tested in the heel prick test. So we need to do a little bit of research before actually going in with the GP and discussing what happened because we need to know what these things mean. So anyways, it was a bit of a stressful half an hour, but we got through it and the meeting went great with the GP, so that's cool. So obviously I would have loved to do this meeting in person, see the family face to face and the baby. But I guess one of the benefits of doing this virtually is the flexibility that you have. You know, you can just open up your computer or phone and you know, you don't need to like make the family move to the GP's clinic or you don't need to move to their house. You know, it's just more convenient in general. And this is even more convenient since I'm in Canada, my partner is in Dublin and the family is somewhere else in Dublin as well. And so that's just a win-win situation. And apart from that, since we're only asking questions and you know we're not doing any physical exam or anything like that, uh, I don't think we missed out too much on like, you know, the whole learning experience. But if we really needed to do a physical exam, that would have been just a little bit more challenging, you know, to do it through Zoom. <laughs> All right, so what was my reaction then to this first family visit? So seeing the family was really a great experience and it was really rewarding as well. I finally felt like a medical student, you know, I finally felt like I was in medical school. I was a bit stressed before, as you can see by this clip right here. Uh, and yeah, I need to revise this because I'm seeing the patient in like 15 minutes. So yeah, I'm gonna get going. Because obviously I needed to prepare and I was like, oh my God, I need to know every single thing in the logbook. I need to know every single question that I could possibly ask, which is true to a certain extent, but not really. Cause you know, we're first year students, so we don't really have all that much clinical knowledge. So finding this balance is kind of tricky. You know, how much do you really need to know? How much depth could you possibly need to explain that to the patient? Because sometimes you're like not sure what the family expects, you know, like, do they know that we're just first year students and that we don't know anything clinical or barely anything? So like sometimes the mother would talk to us about like a condition or something that happened and me and my partner were like, oh yeah, okay, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, but like we had no idea what she was talking about. I was just like writing down everything and then in caps like look it up. But yeah, it was just, you know, it was a really cool experience and honestly, like I just can't wait for the next visit. I can't wait to start my rotations, you know, be on placement in the hospitals and everything. I think it's just gonna be a really cool experience. So the first semester of medical school was like really, really dry in terms of like events, uh, ceremonies or, you know, inaugurations and stuff, you know, to tell us like, congratulations, you're in medical school, like you made it. There was none of that. Some courses themselves were not gonna lie, really boring because it's the same material that we've seen once in high school, then during the undergrad, and then again during the MCAT, and now you're seeing it again. It was like just really repetitive, so I didn't really feel like I was in medical school at all. It felt like undergrad number two or something like that. The thing that was missing was like going to the hospital once a week or something like that, or once every two weeks, like most of the schools in North America do. You know, just to get that little bit of experience to make you feel like you're in medical school. Obviously, you're gonna relearn all of that during your clinical years, and you're probably gonna forget most of the things you've seen before that, since, you know, practical things, you need to practice them a lot in order to remember them. But, you know, it's just to make us feel like we're in medical school and not doing another undergrad, you know? However, the material that we're seeing this semester is much more fun. So we're seeing all the organs, the anatomy and the physiology and the pathophysiology maybe or some clinical stuff. And although we've seen some of that stuff during our undergrads and the MCAT, it's still like much more rewarding than seeing, you know, the Krebs cycle again or what is a phospholipid bilayer and stuff like that. And so it's just, you know, a nicer experience. You feel a bit more, you know, like in medical school. And in addition to that, now we have these family visits, which is really nice because I felt like this is what was missing, you know, a bit of clinical contact, you know, making you feel like you're in medical school, you know, seeing patients, which is, you know, a bit more of what I was expecting from medical school, unlike the first semester. And yeah, I really can't wait for third year, you know, where we start uh, going to the hospitals and stuff. But anyways, that's that for uh, the reaction to seeing my first patient. Uh, I wanted to make a video on this so I can remember in the future and, you know, just share with you guys what it was like to see my first patient virtually through the screen. This is not something that I thought that would happen, obviously, since usually we would go to the GP's practice or to the family's house. 
And so that was a bit unexpected, but yeah, I wanted to share that with you. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, leave a like and comment down below. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do so. It's at ov.men. If you have any questions, just send me a DM or write it down in the comments down below. And if you didn't see my previous videos, please click right here and see you next week's video.